morning, church. Good morning, church. <laughs> well, first of all, um, I need to say, I want to say thank you to Jose Novella for to giving me this a privilege to share the, uh, about contribution today. And, of course, thank you to, for Daniel for this powerful communion. Thank you, bro. Wow. Very nice. I want to thank as well um, to Steph, Paula, Anke, and Alex to, you know, giving the, this, share their garden in this beautiful day. <laughs> All right. Um, who don't know me, my name is Marcus, and I'm, I'm a disciple for two years. And Come on! <laughs> And I'm here to um, share about the uh, contribution today. Okay, let's open our Bible in Luke 19. Let's go. Okay, you know, um, when I read the Bible, <coughs> Jesus always blows me away. Mm. And when I, when I read the book of Luke, and I come to understand that Jesus was a man who understood the times. Jesus was a man who was fully aware of current events and he didn't shy away from using these events that were fresh in people's minds to drive home a divine message to the world not missed. And this is not a different in Luke 19. We are going to be looking at the parable of the ten miners. And Jesus, Jesus uses a current event to inspire this parable. In verse 12 it says, a man of noble birth went a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called, the, he called ten of his servants and gave them ten miners. Put, uh, put this money to work, he says, until I come back. But his subject hate him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made a king, however, and returned, returned home. Then he sent for servants uh, to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they have gained with it. So, so here we see the first thing, the, the first thing the king does was uh, when he returned was uh, he, he just w watches his finances, right? Mm. Be a short church. <laughs> God has been watching your giving, huh? Yeah. <laughs> verse, verse 17, verse, six, verse 16, sorry. Uh, the first one came and said, Sir, your miner has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant. His master replied, Because you have been uh, trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. So here we... We find Jesus, uh, we always hear the faithfulness, faithfulness. And the, the faithfulness and how the, the, the manager, the minor, prove to the king their faithfulness and how they will manage a city. According to, the, to Jesus in verse 17, finances is not a small matter. It's a very small matter compared to the salvation of, of souls in the city. Is your conviction? Is your conviction, Church? For those, uh, for for those who are trustworthy and faithful in their giving, well done. In good eyes, you are a good servant. Amen. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. But for those who have no been, Jesus has something to say to you in verse twenty. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then another servant. Then another servant came and said, Sir. Here's your, here's your miner. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid to you because you are a hard man. You take out um, what you did not put in any rip and what you did not, sh not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by uh, your own word, you wicked servant. You knew, you did you, that I am a hard man. Take out what I did not put in, and reaping what I did not sow. What they, why then did you put my money on deposit so that when I come back, I could have collected it with interest? So, and here, uh, it's interesting how the master didn't deny 
he was a hard man, right? And when he not deny what he doesn't sell, but he correct his servant. He says, you are not afraid, you are wicked. You know, in this living crisis, we, we, we are like in the moment financially challenging time for everyone, right? And, and, you know, companies uh, have closed down, people have lost their jobs, and we are getting our money like very low, and it became like uncertain for many people as well. And maybe some of us might draw in our heart in our giving out and faith, but faith is, is but faith, not, but not fair. Now is the time when faith is the most needed. So when we have a potential to give to God that we don't, the Bible calls that weakness, okay? Mm. In verse 23, God exposed the weakness of the servant's heart with a simple question. Why did you put my money on deposit? Mm. It's a kind of like when, you know, just a, one example here. It's kind of like when uh, 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 someone just come to you and says, I just, I just don't get a, a, a job, bro. Uh, well, well, how many jobs have you been applied for? Oh. How, how long have you been applied for jobs? Oh. <laughs> have you asked disciples who do have a job if they have vacancies in their workplace? Oh. Or maybe it's a spiritual issue if you fasten and pray, maybe because it's opposite. Opposite. You because it's an underlying issue. Jesus, his question in a very simple, uh, have you explored every option? Have you made every effort? Maybe some of us don't even have finances. Jesus' question in the same. Have you explored every option? Have you, made, have you made every effort? If you haven't eat because you simply don't want to change. My brothers and sisters, even those who are watching for the first time, let us be faithful in our giving. Let us explore every option. Let, let, let us make every effort to go over and beyond the call in our giving. Let, let's today be a day. We heard Jesus confidently uh, say, well done, my servant. Yeah. Let us pray. Come on. Hey,